Hi everyone, so I have a question for all of you. Do you like reading peer-reviewed research? Do you like looking at numbers and charts and statistics? Oh boy, I know I sure do, and that's what we're going to be doing today. So this was a new paper published just last month out of Stanford University, Dietary Protein and Amino Acids in Vegetarian Diets, a Review. And this paper just looks at the most recent relevant research comparing plant versus animal protein. And uh, there's some interesting things in here that I wanted to share. It debunks a lot of the myths about, uh, you know, vegan plant sources of protein. And if you want to read the entire paper, I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, but let's take a look at some of the findings. So first off, amino acid adequacy in vegetarian diets. It is commonly, although mistakenly, thought that the amino acid intake may be inadequate in vegetarian diets, as we and many others have argued the amounts and proportions of amino acids consumed by vegetarians and vegans are typically more than sufficient to meet and exceed individual daily requirements, provided a reasonable variety of foods are consumed and energy intake needs are being met. The claim that certain plant foods are missing specific amino acids is demonstrably false. All plant foods contain all 20 amino acids, including the nine indispensable amino acids. Importantly, rather than missing indispensable am amino acids, a more accurate statement would be that the amino acid distribution profile is less optimal in plant foods than in animal foods. Lysine is present in much lower than optimal proportions for human needs in grains, and similarly, the sulfur-containing amino acids, methionine and cysteine, are proportionately very slightly lower in legumes than would be optimal for human needs. This would be important for someone who ate only rice or only beans for sustenance every day. This classic implementation of a protein quality assessment framework focusing on isolated single proteins remains an, an erroneous approach in practice. The terms complete and incomplete are misleading. In developed countries, plant proteins are mixed, especially in vegetarian diets, and total intake of protein tends to greatly exceed requirement. This results in intakes of all 20 amino acids that are more than sufficient to cover requirements. So I'm sure we've all heard the myth that plants are missing amino acids, and because of that, we can't only get protein from plants, because if we did, we'd die because we'd be protein deficient. Well, that's just completely false. Uh, as it was outlined in this paper, a more accurate statement would be that certain plant foods are a little lower in certain amino acids, so they don't have an ideal amino acid profile. But in practice, this, this doesn't really matter because we eat a variety of foods that uh, have complementary amino acid profiles. So, you know, we don't just eat one single food. We don't only eat rice. We don't only eat beans. We eat uh, beans, legumes, grains, nuts, seeds, fruits, and vegetables. So in practice, this isn't a problem. And many of us, especially athletes, uh, protein intakes are so high that there just isn't any real circumstance you'd be under where this would be a concern. And this section also covered protein digestibility. Another factor to consider is differential rates of protein digestibility that impact amino acid availability, often considered as being poor for plant proteins. This remains a matter of debate. There is very little evidence at present regarding a marked difference in protein digestibility in humans. The more precise data collected so far in humans assessing real, specific oroileal nitrogen digestibility has shown that the differences in the di digestibility between plant and animal protein sources are only a few percent. Contrary to historical findings in rats or determinations using less precise methods in humans, for soy protein isolate, pea protein flour or isolate, wheat flour, and lupine flour, the figures were 89 to 92%, similar to those found for eggs, 91%, or meat, 90 to 94%, and slightly lower than those reported for milk protein at 95%. It is important to note that most of the plant protein studied came from raw, untreated, unheated, or minimally heated sources, and some were ingested in complex food matrices, such as unheated flour i.e. in the worst conditions for plant protein because of the presence of trypsin inhibitors and the poor enzyme accessibility of some native proteins. While further research may be warranted to explore, uh, explore possible variations in the bioavailability of some specific amino acids, the body of evidence so far does not show a difference large enough to result in risk of insufficient amino acid absorption for vegetarian and plant-based diets. So again, this is another myth that most of us have probably heard before. 
before, there's this assumption that even if you can get the same amount of protein on a vegan diet, well, it doesn't matter because it's harder to digest. Plant sources of protein are harder to digest and absorb. Well, turns out that's not actually the case. If you take a look at high quality evidence in humans, uh, plant protein is only slightly less digestible than animal protein by only a few percentage points. And as noted in this paper, it might be because uh, in, this, in these studies, the plant sources of protein, they're not heavily processed, they're not heated to high temperatures. So in the real world, the difference might even be smaller. There might not actually be any difference. And there's other research supporting this. So here's another study that was also published just this year in September. They were taking a look at elderly people and they wanted to see if source of protein affected muscle mass. And what they found was, Source of protein didn't matter. Didn't matter if you were getting most of your protein from animals or most of your protein from plants. What mattered was total protein intake. So people who were getting most of their protein from plants, they had the same amount of muscle mass as people who were getting uh, the same amount of protein from uh, mostly animal sources. So it seems that this idea that plant sources of protein, they're harder to digest. So if you're eating a plant-based diet, you need to eat more protein to essentially get the same amount of protein seems to be debunked. There's multiple sources of evidence that suggest that plant protein is virtually the same in terms of digestibility. So I just wanted to share this new research to try and help debunk these uh, myths surrounding vegan protein that are still pretty prevalent and pervasive. And again, uh, if you want to read these papers, I'll leave them linked in the description down below. Uh, and if you like this video, maybe consider supporting me on Patreon or through my website. I have some funding perks you may find interesting. If you're looking for clothing, then check out the Vegan Gain store. And if you're looking for online coaching, then check out Quality Gains. He offers customized meal and training programs. And if you click the link in the description, you'll get a free ebook. And as always, keep making those vegan gains. Beef. What a relief. When will this poisonous product cease? This is another public service announcement. You can believe it or you can doubt it. Let us begin now with the cow. The way it gets to your plate and how.